You could hear a collective sigh of relief across Europe when just 31,000 votes brought the independent candidate Alexander van der Bellen to power as president of Austria, thus preventing the anti-immigrant Freedom Party's Norbert Hofer from becoming Europe's first far-right head of state since the war. The Freedom Party was founded after the war in the 1950s by former Nazis, and it's one of a rising trend of such nationalist parties trampling across Europe right now, fueled by anger mostly at the refugee crisis. Austria was one of the first to welcome refugees last summer, but now it's closed its borders. So as the backlash against mainstream politics continues, how did Alexander van der Bellen win? He joined me for his first international interview from Vienna. President-elect van der Bellen, welcome to the program and thank you for joining us from Vienna tonight. Can I start by asking you, how do you account, sir, for the last-minute surge that puts you over the top in this race? Yeah, that's a good question because I had only 21 percent um, of the votes on at the end of April and you I had to get over 50 percent as you know I think there was a wave uh, a movement uh, especially of young people but not only young people uh, beginning in the last two weeks or so and in the, in the last week before the election especially um, that sort of brought me um, at the end to the victory against my opponent. Mm -hmm. Mr. van der Bellen, do you think people suddenly realized what was at stake? That these young people, as you say, and apparently a lot of women in the postal ballots, they just didn't want to see Mr. Hoffer represent them as head of state? Yes, it certainly was uh, part of this uh, movement, especially among young people. They didn't want to see Mr. Hofer uh, in the president's office. But I also think that uh, at the end, my pro-European stance was important. How much of a mandate do you think you have? Because according to the figures, you won by 31,000 votes, which is not a landslide. Uh, and clearly, this uh, frustration with mainstream politics, this, uh, I'm afraid, xenophobia, this anti-immigrant feeling that's not just abroad in Austria, but around Europe, is here to stay. Mm. How do you deal with that? Yes, it's here to stay, but I'm fairly optimistic that uh, with time we will overcome these attitudes. I mean, <laughs> take myself, for instance. Um, in this uh, mo modern kind of language, I have a migration background and still I got the majority of Austrians behind me in this election. So it also helped that the refugee situation in Austria and in Europe sort of calmed down uh, for the last two months. And it certainly helped, I think, uh, that in the last two weeks before the election, uh, we got an, a new national government or part of the national government uh, was substituted by a new chancellor, uh, new ministers and, and so on. So that, I think, took part of the frustration with the establishment away, part of the frustration with the sort of um, staying still of, of uh, the national government. Let me just put up this map because there is an alarming rise of the far right and nationalism around Europe. It's not just Austria, you know, from mm. Sweden all the way down to Greece and, and parts in between, obviously. Mm. What message does your victory yeah. send to those far right leaders seeking to get into government around Europe? Well, to those far right parties, um, my election uh, was certain, is certainly, uh, I think, uh, uh, brings some frustration. On the other side, uh, among the cap capitals of the Euro European Union, I think you could hear a sigh of relief uh, when on Monday evening it was clear that I am uh, becoming president of Austria. So it is true what you were saying about the rise of, of right-wing parties, but um, with time we shouldn't dramatize that. I think the rise of renationalization in Europe, that is in, in the European Union, um, is maybe at, at its height and, and will come down in, in the coming years. But again, in the capitals of the European Union, there was not only, they were not only afraid that Austria would uh, become of this renationalization, re 
uh, sort of alliance, uh, but that that would uh, would uh, lead to a sort of change reaction uh, in other capitals, and this at least has stopped. And finally, with this very close vote, almost 50-50, give or take, how do you unite Austrians mm. after this event? Well, I will try. The period of the presidency lasts for six years, so I have some time. Uh, and it's true that I will do everything to unite the country up to a point. I mean, Austria is a country of diversity, ethnically, as far as languages is concerned. Uh, it's a very international country, so we don't want to generate something like a, what I would call in, Öst in, in German uh, Einheitsösterreicher. We will stay diverse, but we, will, we should speak to each other, we should listen to each other. That was my main, one of my main messages during the campaign, and to that I will stick. Mr. President-elect, congratulations and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much.